Hello traders, my weekend video real quick here. Uh, it's 1.40 a.m. in the morning. <clears throat> and uh, I'm just watching this. I've got some uh, futures contracts running to the upside, making some pretty good money so far this morning. Uh, basically, uh, I want to start off with, with, with the VIX. And what VIX was telling us Friday, that we were setting up for a big directional move. And uh, a lot of traders, they see a breakdown in a VIX, they automatically assume it's going to be a bullish move. In this market, that has not necessarily been the case. So uh, I was pretty sure VIX was breaking down uh, going into next week, but uh, I, I didn't know which direction we were going to break. I didn't know if we were going to get confirmation to the downside or confirmation to the upside. So I'm going to go over some things I saw Friday and uh, give you an idea why I just went hands off and I thought it was a really good time not to be in the markets until the markets told us which direction they wanted to go, okay? And so far this morning, the VIX is going in one direction, period, plain and simple, and uh, that is helping support the markets moving in one direction. So basically, we do have a nice little bit in the markets, and uh, it is uh, been being driv driven, and the VIX is confirming the move because all the action is to one side of the trade. That's why the VIX is dropping like it is. You don't have any put buyers, um, any put protection buyers coming into the market. They're all liquidating. So we have a forced uh, squeeze situation going into the open tomorrow uh, so far this morning. Now I'm going to start off with the uh, US dollar JPY. Basically, whenever this rallies, uh, this is the carry trade. So basically, uh, you know, anybody who has debt in uh, Japanese yen, uh, which a lot of U.S. companies do, uh, they're getting paid right now. And that is a uh, bullish scenario going into today's session. This is a major trade. Uh, you always like seeing the uh, U.S. dollar declining versus the, the yen. And that, uh, that makes that debt, uh, it, it's a uh, driving force for global equities, okay? So that's something to keep on watch going forward here. Now, let me get into my charts here. And uh, give me one second here. I'm going to get some, some stuff pulled up. Okay, we're getting one hell of a squeeze on fairly light volume. And uh, so just keep that in mind going forward here. Uh, basically, this downward trend from the beginning of the uh, crash today is the first day we're actually we're having a breakaway gap away from trend. Uh, in this correction. So keep that in mind going forward here with all the stimulus hitting the markets and stuff. The markets are squeezing hard to the upside here. And uh, so just keep that uh, on your watch going forward here. Uh, basically, we do have a collapse in our uh, expected moves. And uh, the ES futures, this was from last week's expected moves. I can see it show up better on the S&Ps. <clears throat> Oops. So basically, our expected move last week was up here. Well, they collapsed it down. So basically, we're already going into this week's expected move on the open into tomorrow's session. So basically, you could have bought in to yesterday, uh, Friday's close, and it looks like we're going to be gapping all the way up into what was expected to be the move for the entire week uh, on tomorrow's open. That's the way price action is performing right here, right now. So those S&P, uh, those SPY uh, calls, anybody who did take a bullish scenario for the weekend, they are going to get paid very well going into tomorrow's session. Now, if you look also on your, um, ready showing up on here. Okay, go ahead, slash. Russell was giving us a bearish divergence yesterday, or uh, Friday, uh, giving us some warning signs that uh, prices were trying to dip lower. And uh, so basically, uh, we, got, we got a nice little bid going on so far this morning on the Russell. And what, one thing I want to take away on the Russell, okay, this was last week's uh, expected moves on the Russell. And we came down and we, we blew past the expected move low. Think, giving us the illusion that we were going to have a continuation into uh, this week. Uh, I actually was preparing to go to the short side Friday until I saw that last half an hour of trading and I decided to hold off 
uh, and I know another big friend of mine who had been over $100,000 in puts going into the close Friday, he closed out all of his put positions um, thinking that uh, this was just a, this was not a capitulation sell-off. It was just a slow, steady uh, grind lower Friday, and they just completely uh, ripped it back into their face, you know. So um, something to keep in mind going forward here. Uh, you know, it looked like this was going to break down, and that's why I did not want to take any um, uh, shorts uh, into or any uh, positions until I actually got some clear direction. And basically what we've got going on, uh, we are breaking up above that trend also on the Russell this morning and this downward trend from the beginning. So this is going to be getting squeezed also. And the expected move on the upside, we are not very far at all for the week for the expected move high for the week on the Russell. So very easily we're going to be breaking above expected moves this week setting up here. And then if we also go with the NQs, Okay, uh, as you can see, that was the height, that was the extended ranges from last week on the uh, um, Qs, or on the uh, NASDAQ. Uh, and uh, if you go and look on your uh, what happened last week on these expected moves, which sh gave you a feel that the markets wanted to go higher. The expected move going into the close Friday, which I was watching that, did not migrate lower from the prior week. So we basically got the same overlapping expected move for the queues, suggesting that the uh, markets have price action wrong for the queues going into this week. And that's another reason why I did not want to take that chance. Uh, we were uh, even my marking tighter, uh, my, 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 and a tighter up downside potential for the queues as well. So this was another reason, and it's breaking out above that trend. We're going to be gapping up above this trend tomorrow into the open unless something happens in the overnight session. So very bullish scenarios going into the market the first of the week. Um, and uh, this one here may not necessarily break out above trend, but those other areas definitely are looking like a good possibility. Then we have our diamonds as well, and it's another one. The expected move has come in considerably versus last week. Here's the last week's expected move, and we're already, you know, we, we're more than halfway there, and this was supposed to last for the entire week, and we're already more than halfway there in the Sunday, um, in the early Monday morning uh, trading so far. Major short squeeze happening in this market. Uh, you know, definitely high probability we're going to be breaking out above this week's expected moves on many, many of the things in the market. Okay. Um, okay. SMH. Um, we're not going to actually get any ticks like this until early in the morning, but this is what I want to point out here. Your semiconductors. They're, the expected high for the entire week is well within this last swing high we've had in semiconductors. So that's something to keep on watch for a potential early breakout early this week for the semiconductors. If we do get responsive buying and this continues responsive buying into the markets. Then we have USO, which very it's still really jacked on USO on the and actually the uh, options expanded versus uh, this prior week. So they, they have an expected move all the way up to $7.34 on all the uh, OPEC news that's potentially going to be hitting the markets this week. And so far this morning, it's kind of, it's not actually leading to the upside, but these options are really jacked. Uh, this is one of the areas I definitely do not want to be adding a, a lot of long exposure, knowing that the whole area has been jacked to the moon going into this week. Okay, uh, XLF financials. <clears throat> they have uh, <clears throat> uh, basically right here, right now, the financials. This is our expected move for the entire week, and we're already marking above the expected move in the Monday morning session. Very bullish 
reversal signal for the markets. And we're right up to the, the uh, downtrend from the beginning of this crash. This is going to be our major tail going forward in this market if this is going to hold going into uh, the open and a, a strong continuation pattern to the upside. So just keep that in mind. Uh, already showing very bullish signs for XLF that it might be completely blowing out of this week's expected moves. Unfortunately, that would have been a great um, being those calls in the, in the uh, banks. Which look, looks to be very big paydays tomorrow. So on the leaderboard tomorrow, we're probably going to see the banks at the top of the list on the leaderboard, in my opinion, um, just this early in the morning um, from what I'm seeing in this market. Uh, some of the uh, top stocks that I watch, uh, well, we'll start with Tesla. Okay, uh, Tesla, we're not going to be seeing any prints yet until 4 o'clock in the morning. So we're not going to see where it's going to be printing at. But look. They have brought the expected move all the way down to 5.32. I mean, you know, we all know how Tesla moves. We could be marking up $40, $50 in the morning on the opening print. So this is one that very easily could be marking right into the weekly expected move tomorrow morning. So 5.32 is the target you want to look for for the week. Um, we're, def we're most definitely going to be over 500 I'm sure. I just don't know how much further beyond that, so... Something to keep on watch going forward. Very bullish scenario. Um, you know, it's still early in the day. Everything could change by the morning. Something could happen. But, man, they, they definitely, uh, there is a definite appetite for these equities uh, on this cross and uh, breakout scenario. And what really is amazing is the light volumes. This breakout above that trend, extremely light volumes this morning. But it doesn't take a lot of volumes to change the entire tone of a market. So we just want to keep, you know, keep a close eye on it and see what happens. Um, you know, very good uh, potential that the, they're going to be squeezed really hard. The shorts are going to be squeezed very hard tomorrow morning, in my opinion. Uh, another one, AMD. Uh, basically, you see this, uh, it, you know, uh, Friday. This was the Friday open. You know, just slight, not, not much very far above the Friday open. AMD is the expected move for the entire week. So something to keep on watch. We had some relative weakness at the end of last week. But, you know, if the markets are going to continue higher, semiconductors should be an outperformer, in my opinion. Uh, so that's something to definitely keep on watch. NVIDIA. They crushed down the, the volatility, the expected move on that. And uh, so well within inside of this uh, chop zone. And we are... NVIDIA has, is still acting as one of the strongest stocks out there on this, on this corrective up, up move. So very likely we're going to see some responsive buying in NVIDIA if the markets continue to go higher. Um, Apple. Apple, uh, given the relative move in these markets, I think we're going to see Apple over the 248 mark. 248 is a critical area that it must uh, hold above. Uh, I do think we will probably be opening up at or above the 248 tomorrow. And it has been underperforming the market, so that's one that you want to just keep a close eye on. Um, so, you know, uh, so basically we, what we have here is an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And uh, just, you know, uh, we have to break out above the 262 area for it to be an actual bullish pattern. Basically, right now, we're just seeing the short squeeze probably up into the 248 going into tomorrow. Uh, Facebook, I really do not like anything to deal with uh, advertising. But, you know, if the markets are rallying hard tomorrow, Facebook's likely to rally with it. So, uh, basically, uh, a move back up to the 263 area is possible, uh, depending on the strength of the markets. Uh, Alibaba, probably outperform. Uh, a lot of the problems have are starting to repair themselves over in China. So this might be one of the outperformers tomorrow if uh, uh, buyers are coming in. And we, we have been chopping around this downward trend line for a while now. It is preparing for a mega move to the upside, uh, in my opinion. It's just been building out a nice little base. Uh, this is one of the most constructive patterns that I have on my charting going in for a bullish pattern breakout into uh 
tomorrow. And uh, Baba does love to move big on Mondays, up or down. So that's something to keep on watch going forward. The day of the week does make a difference with Alibaba. Uh, basically, uh, I do think we are trying to build out a higher base for Netflix for uh, potential trying to break out to new 52-week highs, in my opinion. And we continue to have multiple weeks uh, up here around the 385 area acting as resistance for multiple weeks on our expected moves. I've only got two of them on my charts, but that has been the, the case. And they keep continue to tighten up the uh, market maker moves. These market maker moves were further out the past few weeks, and I've been taking them off, and they've been tightening them up. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, just something to keep on watch going forward here for your Netflix as a bullish continuation pattern on uh, any type of strength in the markets. Amazon, I'm tightening it up a little bit, but not much. Uh, it's not really a pattern I like. I'd like to see it uh, tightening up even more than that for a squeeze potential. But, you know, if the markets are, are going up, then an Amazon is going to be going with it. Uh, Microsoft. This one here is a darling of the market. If it were to start catching some steam, we do have overlapping value. Uh, it's kind of like a ceiling in the stock the 161.75 area so keep that in mind the 161.75 serious resistance that's multiple weeks of um uh, of uh, had more more than just two uh, weeks of resistance on these expected moves and they continue to tighten up on these expected moves and we are on, already on the bullish side of the downtrend so something to keep on watch as a short squeeze candidate all the way up back up to that area uh, and then we reassessed after after we get to that point. Uh, Zoom video looks like it's ready to rock, in my opinion. Uh, we have tightened it up considerably. The 131.08 area. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that was last week's. This is last week's. So this week's areas now are, uh, I think what we're going to be doing here, breaking out to last week's expected, uh, uh, yeah, we, we overshot the expected low from last week. That's what it was, okay? We overshot the expected low from last week, so now we are marking in another, a lower low. So we have, you know, so this was a more bearish pattern coming into the first of the week. If we were to get a squeeze in a market, this thing here could really rock, in my opinion, to the upside, so... Just keep that in mind uh, going forward here on your trading. Okay. And we have, uh, I've been watching Roku. Uh, it's in the same camp as, it just continues to bleed a little bit lower here on Roku. And uh, it's in the same camp as Netflix. It's uh, And now they're, they're even offering a free HBO, uh, limited time specials for free HBO on uh, Netflix announced this weekend, so uh, our, 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 on uh, Roku, yeah. And uh, this is one that I am definitely keeping on watch. Um, I don't know if we're quite there yet. Uh, it is a little bit, if you have an inverted head and shoulders pattern, um, we are, we've retraced almost 50%. This is the area where you want to start seeing buying coming in to support price, in my opinion. And uh, it is, uh, you know, it has tightened up considerably on these expected moves. So, you know, uh, this thing starts to poke out above that line. It can move and move fast. So something to definitely keep on watch as a bullish candidate, in my opinion. And then you have your Boeing, and uh, it just, uh, after the whole stimulus thing, I don't really think the stimulus is actually going to help Boeing out that much um, after reading through it and stuff. And basically all this stimulus is doing it's allowing employers to keep people on their payroll and furlough their employees instead of putting it on the unemployment system. And I, I don't know if you guys saw that how the unemployment numbers have just skyrocketed through the moon. So basically all this money the government's putting out to these employers, they're actually keeping their employees on the payroll. And how it works is when they call people back to work, the people they keep on the payroll, they can, they can write that off. And anybody that they don't keep on their payroll, they have to pay Uncle Sam back whatever Uncle Sam paid. 
So basically, it's an insurance policy. It's not an all or nothing scenario. So basically, if this economy is in a toilet whenever we come out of this and they can't hire back as many people, the employers only have to pay back, you know, uh, on the loans. They're only having to pay back the money that they pay, they furloughed on employees, you know, uh, above and beyond, beyond, or the ones that they actually have to lay off down the road. So basically, all, all this stimulus has done is it's just trying to negate how bad the unemployment numbers are and distort just how bad people, how many people are being unemployed here on uh, next week's numbers. Because next week's numbers are going to be impacted by the stimulus, for, uh, you know, big time. It, it's going to start manipulating the actual results. And to give you a quick glance here, Every crash that we've ever had in the markets, I mean every, to 2007, back all the way back to the, you know, early 70s, every crash, you know, weekly unemployment claims, we've net, these are the highest claims we've ever had in any type of crash scenario ever in history. This is the unemployment claims we currently have. And th this is all going to be distorted because now, instead of, now they're going to furlough more people, put more people out of work, but it's not going to be reflected in these numbers. It's people are the companies are keeping people on their payroll instead of throwing them on the unemployment uh, initial claims scene. That's the only difference that what that, that all that stimulus is doing. It's not making the market any better whatsoever, but it's giving the illusion things are getting better. Uh, Disney came out uh, Friday and announced they're laying off 90% of their workforce. So uh, I think some of that, is they're, they're taking some of the government money, so people are getting furloughed. So, you know, you have to re really dive into the news headlines to see it, which ones are being furloughed and which ones are being laid off because the news outlets are not actually defining that very well. But Disney is laying off 90% of their workforce, and so basically... You know, when we do come out of this, if they can't bring everybody back, you know, you know, they're going to have to, they're going to be on the on the hook for any money they've taken in, in loans from Uncle Sam, in theory. So, um, so just keep that in mind. You know, I have a feeling if it, it does get really bad, that uh, Uncle Sam's just going to come out and just write it off, and they're going to they're going to change it and say, hey, you you companies don't have to pay it back, type scenario if things do continue to uh, worsen. But I had a really nice short on uh, a Disney on all those uh, furloughs, 90% furlough, that was bad. So I got a really nice trade on uh, Disney Friday afternoon. That was one of my best trades of the day. And uh, so basically that's all I've got to say here on my uh, weekend video. Uh, boy, it's really, really nice squeeze going on here in the free market session. And it just continue. It's just a rocking. I mean, they are just completely tearing the head off of these. Uh, anybody who's got short these markets, they are going to wake up and they are going to have some very bad P and Ls tomorrow morning. And uh, it's a, just a major, major short squeeze on very, very light volume. And uh, see here, are these being updated yet? Uh, yeah, these are being updated. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, uh, these are very heightened volumes already this morning on uh, on USO and the SPY already this morning very heightened volumes hitting the tape already for being two o'clock in the morning so uh, keep that in mind going forward here you know this is one squeeze from hell that uh, you know typically they're violent you know uh, you have these violent moves in the market and and um, so just keep that in mind going forward here in your trading and uh, uh it looks like we're going to be breaking breaking well above expected moves for the week, in my opinion, uh, it, unless something changes uh, in the markets. Thanks a lot, and I will see you trading tomorrow.